it was generally assumed that uh, there was only one neurosecretory peptide. That word means neuro coming from the brain, secreting into the pituitary that controlled the pituitary gland. And that was thought to be growth hormone, releasing hormone, or in the context of our pharmaceutical work today, sermorelin. But what happened was this other fellow, this Bowers guy who worked for one of the people who won the Nobel Prize for GHRH, was a chemist and he found out that he made these derivations of a very small molecule and a Keflin molecule in the brain. And when he put that into the body, it was very potent. He couldn't understand what it was because the sequence was quite different from GHRH. It was only the one that was first effective was six peptides, and he called it growth hormone releasing peptide six, GHRP6, and didn't know what it did. It didn't know why it worked. It certainly wasn't GHRH. And when I was actually working at Smith Klein, I had a short hiatus at Smith Klein. I was working on the project that was GHRP6. It was called Smith Klein French 110679. That was going to be used because of its effect on growth hormone as a animal product to produce prolactin and increase milk production in in cows. Well, that was dropped. The project was dropped, and it became again public domain, pretty much. Everyone was using it in combination with sermorelin because the two, th two hormones synergized. That means they potentiated each other's activity. So it was not until 1999 that an investigator in Japan was searching for the endogenous hormone. What did, what did this thing really represent? And they found out that it was a gut peptide, a peptide called ghrelin, that was produced in the, in, in the stomach. And they couldn't understand how did something in the stomach stimulate the pituitary gland until subsequently it was found that there are receptors for this product in the, in the brain. And in fact, some areas of the brain actually produce it. Ghrelin then is different from sermorelin. Ghrelin is a amplifier of sermorelin and it has different properties. Sermorelin works directly on the pituitary gland. This product, this GHRP product, works in the brain to stimulate the neurons that produce GHRH and it also inhibits the hormones that inhibit GHRH. So what it does really is stimulate the stimulator, inhibit the inhibitor, and therefore amplify the overall effect on the pituitary gland. So we can differentiate then the levels at which, which these two peptides work. And so where does it work in the pituitary gland? Do they both work on the same receptor? And the answer is no. One of them works on the primary receptor, the growth hormone releasing hormone receptor that produces and secretes growth hormone, but it also activates the growth hormone gene, the gene that produces a growth hormone. The reason that's a value in our work in age management medicine is because you wanna keep the pituitary gland filled with growth hormone. You wanna keep a reserve there so that when you need excessive product or we need product for whatever reason. If there's some sarcopenia going on, if there's some need in the body that you want to get more growth hormone, it comes out. So then the other hormone amplifies that effect because they have a different receptor. So the GHRPs then amplify at the pituitary level also the signal from growth hormone to cause a bigger peak of growth hormone to be released than would normally happen. So this differential in the activity of 
growth hormone releasing peptides and growth hormone releasing hormone is valuable in our clinical applications. That there is an interesting aspect to these synthetic molecules that were made by Dr. Bowers. And the aspect is he was able to create these molecules by using amino acids that are not natural to the body. They're isomers. An isomer is something, uh, they're optical isomers, which means they have the capacity to rotate light, to change light and solution one direction or the other. The normal ones that we have in the body are L isomers. They bend light, left bending. Dextra rotatory isomers, the D isomers, are not. And they are unnatural in the body, and that's very good in a way because by inserting those molecules to change the configuration of the, of the synthesized molecule to fit the receptor, another thing happened. Since the D isomers are not natural to the body, they're not digested so easily, which means that they can be taken orally. And so in addition then to injecting the growth hormone releasing hormones, we have the option now, and it's increasing, to give them orally. And the last one that was made, which is not a peptide, which is called ibutamorin, has a very high bioavailability. That means 85% of it is bioavailable, which means that most all that you give uh, will actually become available to stimulate the pituitary gland. And so I'd like to close this section by simply saying that these different molecules then serve different purposes. They're complementary. They tend to maintain health of the pituitary gland. They tend to prevent the degenerative changes that I discussed earlier about pituitary decline over time. And the GHRPs, because they are not strictly growth hormone releasing peptides, do other things. They actually suppress the bad parts of the immune system, if I put it that way. Cytokines that are destructive rather than constructive and protective. So things like tumor necrosis factor, which we know is a degenerative cytokine, is suppressed by this molecule. So the molecule is also very cytoprotective of the heart. So protects the condition of the heart from ischemic damage, that means blood clots. And so it does a lot of things by itself that are not mediated through growth hormone. So in the design of a clinical program, an integrated program for sustaining health as we age, we use the principal hormone, the GHRHs, we use the, the secondary amplifiers, and we use the accessory uh, peripheral hormones, the testosterones, the, uh, the thyroid hormones, etc., to bring around a, to, to, to as best as possible to, to normalize your endocrine system to sustain good health for as long as possible.